so this is part 2 of flow networks and here in the first lecture we saw how we find how we find the max flow for a network from a given source to destination in a flow network but we saw that by choosing paths randomly it was not working always so here we will now tell you about an algorithm which is known as Ford Fulkerson. Okay, so this algorithm will be there. So the spelling is Ford Fulkerson. And here what you will understand is that we bring a lot of concepts and new terms. So like augmenting path, residual network and some of the properties of the flow network which are necessary in order to understand the Ford Ferguson algorithm okay so starting with a flow network so it's a graph with vertices and edges and it's a directed graph okay so the edges are directed each of the edge has some capacity so like we discussed about pipelines which carried oil and so that capacity of each pipeline between two different vertices or cities is some positive non-negative constant okay so cuv is the capacity of the edge it requires that u comma v so there if there is an edge between u and v so this algorithm requires that if there is an edge between u and v so there should be no reverse edge so there will be no reverse edge v to u so this is important for solving the ford fulkerson algorithm that when you have directed edge between u to v there should be no reverse edge and there should be no loop self loops in the at any vertices and then if there is no edge between uv then capacity of uv is taken as zero okay and there is of course a source which is pumping something and there is a sink where we want the flow to end okay so this is there so you can see with this graph a flow network graph okay so this is a flow network and what it does so source there are four vertices this is a graph and then there is a so sink t and what happens 16 is its capacity 11 is the actual flow of the liquid or something that is going on here 12 by 12 means that flow is also 12 and it's the maximum capacity that is being utilized here in this pipe okay so there are 1 by 4 only 1 out of the 4 capacity is being utilized so now this flow network has two properties okay so the first one is known as the capacity constraint okay so what it says the capacity constraint that you can not exceed the capacity of the pipeline itself whatever is the capacity that is the maximum you can pump you cannot increase the capacity by saying that okay i will buy something new that becomes something some problem a new problem okay so you are given some capacity and your flow should be less than the equal to the capacity flow conservation okay so whatever is coming in except the source okay and destination so whatever is coming to some other intermediate node the same thing should be going out because it's a flow so you are not stopping something you don't have any storage here where you will store also so whatever is coming like here three gallons per day is coming here five here eight so this if it is 2 here so 8 plus 5 13 16 is there then 10 should be going from this and 6 so, so total summation of incoming flow and outgoing flow should be the same so that's what is represented by this that there is a vertex u okay so this is a vertex u whatever is coming f v u so v are other vertices here whatever is coming from that v1 v2 the summation of these should be equal to whatever is going out from u so okay so f u2 v so here 
something like V3, V4. So whatever is going out, it should be equal to whatever is incoming. I'm not storing anything. Everything is flowing, free flow. And what is the total flow that is coming out of the source? So that is the flow capacity. And it is equal to flow from the source and out going out to others. Okay, so this is summation F S to V. S is the source. So F of S2 if there are nodes like V1 plus F of S comma V2 okay F of S comma V3 and so on okay and if there is no edge the F of S comma V3 will be zero so here F of S comma V1 in this and F of S comma V2 so this is the flow okay let's see now this is a very short algorithm and in fact it will be called a method because how you Let's see first Ford Fulkerson method. Okay, it needs your graph, the flow network, the source, and the sink. So initialize all the flows in all the edges of the graph to zero. Okay, so that's the initialization. Then it just runs a simple loop. So while there exists an while there exists an augmenting path P in the residual graph G F. So this is not girlfriend, so this is a residual graph, okay? So while there exists augmenting path P in residual graph, so augment flow F along P, okay? So here we see some new terms, augmenting path, okay? So this is one term, residual graph, okay? So let's see first what is this, then we will try to understand. So residual graph, what is that? So here there is a flow network, okay, the so last example itself. So here this is a graph with source and sink. We are using some capacities, the flow from S to V1 is 11 out of the 16 capacity. Flow from S to V2, we have a flow of 8 with capacity is 13. So what happens is, now let's see how we make the residual graph. So residual graph means, so let's see, S to V1, so we have maximum capacity of 16, we are having a flow now of 11. So it means what? That we can still pump 5 more, 5 units of liquid more from S to V1. So this is residual, it is still left that much of capacity. Here if I'm going from V3 to V2, so I am only using 4 out of the 9 units of capacity. So still I have 5 capacity left from V3 to V2 direction. Okay. So that's the meaning and what we do now is that we make and this also tells now residual graph why we had one very important initially constraint that there should be no reverse edge. Okay. We will see why it is true. So there should be no reverse edge. So let's see what we are doing. 11 S to V1, 11 by 16. This means still there is a capacity of 5, 16 minus 11 equal to 5. This capacity is still there from going from S to V1. So we make that here. In this direction, there is a capacity of 5. And we have said that, okay, cancellation should also be there. So if you have seen the first video, Okay, so where when we were taking some randomly chosen augmenting path, then it always did not converge to the best possible maximum flow. So here what we do, there is a term called cancellation. So what we do now, there is a capacity of having five units of liquid in going from S to V1, but now in the opposite direction, so 11 units are flowing from S to V1. So we add a backwards, there is a capacity of 11. Okay, it means I can decrease here. So this gives us a possibility of decreasing. So decreasing flow, if I chose first augmenting path and let's say I chose a very high value in something which caused me like the last example, no path available from S to T. So I can decrease the path, the flow by pushing something in the reverse direction. So it means 11 is going in this direction. So 5 is left here in, as a residue and 11 is left in the opposite direction. So if I 
can now push 11 here so that whole of this 16 is available in the opposite direction. So this way we just calculate the residual graph. So for example, V2 to V4, we have already have a flow of 11 out of 14. So it means 3 is available in the from V2 to V4 and 11 is available in the opposite direction from V4 to V2. Let's see then which one. So V3 to T. So we have flowing 15 out of 20 in this direction from V3 to T. So we still have a capacity of 5, 20 minus 15 that is left going from V3 to T. But in the reverse direction we, to decrease that flow we have 15 left in the opposite direction. So this way we make the residual graph. So this tells us that okay this much capacity is still available in this flow graph moving in any direction. So for moving from S to V2 we have a capacity of 5 so 13 minus 8 is still available for moving from S to V2 and in the opposite direction we have a capacity of 8. So this way you draw the residual graph network GF and here now what we do we find augmenting path okay which means is there a path here in the residual graph from which I can go from S to T. So here I've given one example, this shaded region by pink color. So I can go from S to V2, V2 to V3 and V3 to T. So this has capacity 5, this has capacity V2 to V3 has 4, V3 to V to T has 5. So the bottleneck is 4. So the residual capacity of this path will be the minimum of all the links in the path. Okay. So, or minimum of all the edge capacity. So, this is the residual capacity. So, now you understand residual network, augmenting path and the residual capacity. Okay. So, I have now taken this path. So, now again I come back to my flow network. So, what has happened? I have now used 5 capacity here also. It means this 5 has gone so 5 plus 8, 13 will be in the reverse direction. Okay, okay, not 5 I have used, I have used 4. So it will be 4 I have used in this direction. So it will come to the opposite direction. It becomes 12 here. So 12 I have used. So if you see I am moving here, so 4 I am using. So this 8 already was getting used. So plus 4, now 8 plus 4, 12 is getting used. So similarly here what happened? So we had a what was here 4 out of 9 was available here so 5 capacity was left I have used everything here so now what happens 9 out of 9 is available for going here okay so this I just represent by 9 and then here what happens I am using the 5 also so it becomes now 15 I was already using out of 20 the rest of the 5 also I have used not 5 but I have used 4 because this is the residual capacity so 4 I have used again so 19 out of 20 I have used so these are the corrections I have made and this becomes the new flow network and cancellation so what happens cancellation we put an edge in the opposite direction of what capacity we have used so this gives us the cancellation property which means pushing flow on the reverse edge in the residual graph so that when an augmenting path is available, we can decrease also of what we have already used for some other path. Okay, so this way it allows us to find the maximum possible path. So max flow and min cut theorem. So we will just see this property. If F is a flow in the network, okay, with source S sync T, following conditions are equivalent. So it says that the flow is maximum flow in the graph. If in your residual network GF, it has no more augmenting path. So it has no augmenting path left. So it tells that, okay, we have, we make new, make, first you make a residual graph out of the flow network. Then see, is there more augmenting path left in the residual graph? If there is, so you use it and this way you keep on going. So it says that F is maximum, the flow is maximum. When in your residual graph, you have no more augmenting path left so you have no augmenting path left so this is the basic idea 
now little bit about cuts that we will also see so cuts in a flow network is that you divide the vertices into two parts two sets one will be having the source and other will be having the sink so here we have a cut we have s v1 v2 in one cut and t the other one which has the sink v3 v4 the flow from s to t is basically everything that is going from this part from the source part to the sink part and the things minus the flow that is coming from the sink part to the source part so for here the flow across the cut s is f of v1 to v3 plus f of v2 to v4 minus f of v3 to v2 so this comes out to be 19 capacity of the cut is basically everything that is going from the source side so this is c of v1 v3 plus c of v2 v4 26 so these are all the definitions that are needed to understand the ford fulkerson algorithm in the next lecture we will see the example for ford fulkerson algorithm okay so i hope you